I'm Shoestring Jay and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things thrifty, frugal and money saving. Although I'm going to go a little bit off piste with this video, although I think it's connected to frugality, and just talk a bit more about simplifying our lives and just making life less complicated. And I do think that does very much relate to how you approach your finances and your approach to just buying stuff and how you control your money and that kind of thing. So I think it is a subject that goes hand in hand with frugality. So anyway, I was, th I was thinking a little bit about it. I was sorting through some of my books and I came up with this book, which is a really old favourite, In Praise of Slow, How a Worldwide Movement is Challenging the Cult of Speed by Carl Honore. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, and it was, it's, I've had it for a long time. I've had it when it first came out and it did impact me quite a lot at the time. He's just talking about how we kind of rush about. It was 2004, it was first printed. Um, so 20 odd years ago. And he's talking about how we just kind of rush around and we get onto these tight schedules. And I think there's an element of that in lots of people now. They feel like they have to jam pack their lives. They have to be achieving something all of the time. They have to be doing something all of the time. And I've certainly been in that little cycle on a hamster wheel of I need to get on, I need to get on myself at points. And they've never been my happiest points of my life. So I just thought it was worth kind of discussing, really. So I do have a few notes to try and remind myself what I want to say. So if I'm looking down, apologies. But so some of us do things like I remember reading a book can't remember which book it was, some of you may know, it's a so-called self-help book a while back where the author suggested you get up at 5am every morning because you would be able to achieve so much more in your life if you did that. And that does work probably, you'd get quiet time and get things done for some people if you happen to get a good night's sleep, if you can get to sleep early and just go straight to sleep if you don't have children waking you up in the night if you're not an insomniac and that kind of thing. So it might help your productivity. But what I wouldn't want to think is that you then have to be just be productive all the time and that pro productivity is the most important element of your life. And, and it really isn't. And I think you can be productive at certain points, but just to allow time to chill out and relax as well. It's a bit like frugality, isn't it? So you're frugal in some areas of your life so that you can actually spend on the things that matter to you. So if you used it like that, so you were very productive at certain points, you can get lots done in a small space of time, that you can then use this spare time that you've got to go and do something you enjoy, like having a walk or spending time with your children, spending time with your friends, just doing nothing, just relaxing, you know, and you don't always have to have every bit of your day completely jam packed. And I think if you do try to do that, you end up end up being really burnt out. And I don't think that's good for anyone's health. So it's easy to get into habits like, and I've definitely been guilty of this one. You've got children, so you collect them from school and you rush around taking them to all these activities. And you feel like that's showing what a great parent you are because they go to piano and swimming and horse riding or whatever else they do. And perhaps you've got more than one child and they're doing different things. So you're juggling. I remember taking one of mine to swimming and, well, two of them to swimming, one after the other though, because they weren't in the same class, whilst I had a baby crawling around on the floor in the wet and getting bored and fed up and it actually was really quite stressful. So in the end, I gave that up, the swimming lessons, and I just started taking them on a Sunday morning to the junior pool when it was really quiet, like nine o'clock on a Sunday morning, and just teaching them to swim myself. So that was so much less stressful, so much less noisy, and certainly a lot cheaper. We just always seem to be in a rush. We get our shopping delivered because it saves us time, because we're at work or whatever, so we don't get a chance to go in and look at the food and choose our food and maybe find some bargains. And um, we perhaps get meal kits delivered and takeaways delivered because we don't have time to cook, but we haven't got the energy to cook because we've been cramming our lives with so much extra activity. We cram jobs and activities into our weekends when we work the nine to five Monday to Friday. 
Um, I remember doing that, just spending the whole of Saturday cleaning and doing the laundry and doing the shopping and catching up on paperwork and that kind of thing. So it was just all rammed into one day so that I could then try to relax on the Sunday. And Sunday became a day when I actually did get a chance to do some of the things I wanted to do. But one day out of seven, somehow it doesn't feel like it's going to be a recipe for pure joy, does it? Some of us use alcohol to unwind or drugs, recreational drugs or we are really tired and we just veg out in front of mindless telly and just feel like we've just kind of haven't really properly relaxed and haven't really achieved anything at the end of our evenings and we just live for those two weeks where we might get two weeks we just go and lie by a pool in the sunshine and relax and we spend all the other 50 weeks of the year saving up so we can do these precious two weeks somewhere if we're lucky. And we buy things to present an image of ourselves to the world. So to show that we're successful and to show that we're happy, we can put them on Instagram and Facebook and say, look at us, we're on holiday, or look at my new car, or look at the new sofa I bought. Or you know, you know what I mean. You go and kind of get into that whole consumerist thing where you think that somehow you can fill a void in your life by buying stuff. And then if you spend a lot of money buying stuff to fill the hole in your your life, then you have to work more. So you're even busier. So you get into this kind of cycle uh, of a, like a, I said before, like a hamster on a wheel. You're just going round and round and round and round, but you're not getting anywhere. And I used to find when I was super, super busy that I just had very little time to just be. I remember my girls used to say, oh, mummy, I'm bored. And I would think, I wish I was bored. I would love to have the time to get bored. And I would say that to them, which is a bit of a mum thing to say. But, you know, we, we just sometimes just being by yourself and having time just to think a thought from start to finish, just to allow thoughts to come into your head without constantly thinking, right, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? I should be doing this. I've got to get here by this time. I've got to do that. And this list of things, and quite often a lot of those things are self-imposed. So I've got to get to the gym. I've got to go to my book group. I've got to go and play a game of squash with Harry or whatever. We kind of set ourselves a schedule because we feel like these are the things that we want to achieve. And sometimes if you look at all those things, the different things, you might just think, oh, actually, if I took a couple of those things away, perhaps I would enjoy the remaining things a little bit better. I could give my full attention to them and my time. And it just doesn't leave us with a lot of time for just creative pursuits and hobbies and practical things like sorting your finances and just going through your budget and thinking, well, actually, if I cut this, this and this, maybe I could work a bit less. No wonder that so many of us are just so stressed and there's so many mental health issues, and especially amongst young people, but I think amongst older people as well. People are just stressed. They don't know what to do to make themselves feel happy. They almost don't remember. They're not particularly horribly unhappy, maybe, but they just don't feel very fulfilled and content. And contentment is really not an easy thing to find. And sometimes it isn't about, well, if I just do my whole house up and make it perfect, I'll be happy. If I just get the most amazing job ever, even if it means working 60, 70 hours a week, I'll have lots of money and then I'll be happy. And it's always just chasing the next thing. If I just get my teeth sorted, if I just get a boob job, if I just get a nose job, if I just do these things that cost money, things will be perfect. And and they just, as you get older, you realise that that isn't really the way it works. It, it's not things. It's not about things. It's not about making superficial changes. It's about finding something a little bit more key, something at the foundation of your being that you can change that might make you feel a bit more content. So I remember reading this book in Praise of Slow. The thing that sticks out, it's been a long time since I read it, but it's, I keep it on my shelf because I know I'm going to come back to it. I will come back to it. I think I might actually read it again now. But it's, it's a lot in there just to make you go, oh, my God, that's me. And I do remember it, that in many respects, like with the clubs, the girls with the clubs, going to all these different things, thinking that makes me a great parent. He found himself, it, it was a key moment for him, speed reading a bedtime story 
to his child so that he could tick it off the list. I've been a good parent. I've read a bedtime story to my child. I've speed read the bedtime story so I can rush off and do a bit more work or whatever. And But there's no quality in there, is there? There's no quality time with your child, no time to discuss the story, to ask your child questions, to allow them to ask you questions, to go off at a tangent and talk about something else. There's no quality of life there. It's just literally a tick box exercise. And I found, I've heard recently that parents don't actually read a story. They'll actually put one on a phone or an iPad and then they'll go away. They'll find a bedtime story. And I've seen them on YouTube, bedtime stories for children. And you miss that interaction, don't you? Okay, they'll probably go to sleep. They can hear a story. I certainly, an audio book will send me to sleep at night. So, you know, it sends them to sleep, but you've missed an opportunity to share their day and teach them something and go through some language. They might ask you what words mean and that kind of thing, what concepts mean. And you have like educational opportunities that are just fun, that you're not even thinking you're educational. They're just part of your child's development and learning. You miss that. So most of us are dominated by the clock. We need to work. We have to go out to work. We have bills to pay. And most of our lives are set up like that. And it's just not possible for people to go and find a, buy a farm in rural Wales or Ireland or somewhere and go self-sufficient and live a simple life and a slow life. And lovely as that sounds, in reality, we can't all do that. And not everybody would suit that lifestyle. So you can still take something from those people that do that and learn something from that idea of just being more mindful about what you're doing and being slower, slowing down and trying to simplify your ways of thinking, your processes and just your whole life so that you can live it a bit more fully and not rush through it and just live for the weekend and holidays. So in the past, I've definitely been affected by just the need to just keep going, working, 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 trying to bring in enough money, trying to keep a household running, being a parent and trying to, you know, support my children. And it doesn't leave very much time for you. And it's very hard to get out of that, but it's not impossible to improve things. Some of the things that I did to just kind of slow down a little bit were, I mentioned already the clubs, so I just cut them down. So we were doing loads of different things. They were doing dancing, street dancing. Um, they were doing swimming. They were doing drama. And these things were costing a lot of money. Horse riding was the most expensive. And really, we just had to look at the, our finances and say, well, we literally can't afford all of those things. We just have to work more, try and bring in more income to do those things. And, you know, we could pull back from some of those. They don't need to do every improvement opportunity possible. You don't have to present them with every opportunity. They don't, it doesn't, it's not the end of the world if they don't learn piano, you know, from age three. There's lots of other things that you could teach them that don't cost lots of money and don't take lots of time and don't take them away from you. So I cut back on a lot of things and we just did one. So we did one thing each, two of them did the same thing, which really helped. So. It didn't make me a bad parent, but it took a while because, you know, my friends were in all of that thing. They'd charge out of school, they'd have all packed teas there and they'd be charging their various kids around to different activities. And it's very easy to kind of get caught up in that and not question it and not question the value of everything that you're doing. And the other thing that I made time to do from when my children were really very small was time to do my yoga practice and I actually trained to be a yoga teacher whilst they were small and I did prioritise that time. So obviously still had time for them, but you know, I would make just half an hour, 45 minutes by myself while I was going off and I was quietly doing some yoga practice, doing a little bit of, mod of meditation because by doing that and being kind of selfish about that or going out to my class in the evening, and maybe leaving them crying sometimes with their dad, you know, by doing that and saying, like, I have to do that, I was better. I was a better parent for doing it. And sometimes it was really difficult to get out of the house. I'd be kind of charging around trying to sort out the remains of dinner and that kind of thing. And then I would just drive because it was a little way to little distance to my class. 
and I would calm and wind down on the way to the class and then I would do an hour and a half of yoga and then I'd come back and the kids would be in bed and it would be lovely and I'd, I'd feel so much better and it really helped my mental health. It's really hard to be a parent of even one child but to be a parent of three children um, and be working and made, trying to maintain relationships with other people as well it is hard it's not an easy task it can be a really joyful task but you can get really overwhelmed with the enormity of the number of things that you're expected to do so prioritizing some time for you to do one thing a week whatever it is it doesn't matter but it's just for you even if it's just going for a long walk catching up with friends and having a coffee just by yourself if you can possibly do that not just as a parent just as a person you know if you can just do something and allow yourself the time and give yourself that time for self-care just even if it's once a week I think that's really really important and if your mental health is better then that impacts on everybody else around you so there came a point as well where I really simplified my finances so I, part of that was driven by the fact that I had to um, when I became a single parent particularly for a bit and part of it was just to kind of take the financial pressures of of myself and just to be in kind of control of my money so I wrote a very clear budget and I had a look to see what I could cut and that's when the thing with the clubs comes up so what can I cut do I need to even think about us all piling off to France for a holiday can we do something differently so there was a point at which we bought a tent and started camping in this country and our holidays became really super frugal and until they became teenagers when the kids were little they loved camping there was so much freedom involved in camping and if you went to another campsite where there are other families the kids all just made a gang and all became friends and ran around and got lots of fresh air and just had a, a ball it became a different story with my girls particularly as they became teenagers and they they wanted all mod cons and that kind of thing and they were saying well where can I plug my straighteners in and we'd have to find a campsite that had decent showers and that kind of thing but it was still you know a cheaper holiday and it was a time to spend quality time together and I think just taking hold of your finances can mean that you can work a bit less and I still had to work you know I had to work and I did side hustles and all sorts of things because I needed to bring the money in but um, I also allowed myself a bit of time and I didn't have to do but one of my options would have been to retrain and going to a much more high powered job or to start getting the train into London every day because I knew I could earn a lot more money if I did that but that would have left me really exhausted with even less time so for me organizing my finances working a bit uh, being a bit more frugal in my lifestyle um enabled me to work a bit less so and spend more time with the kids so we did things like, you know, simple activities, like we would just take a, a trip to the beach. We'd get to take a, a car journey with a picnic to the beach. And, you know, you don't have to actually be abroad when you live in the UK. There's beaches all over the place. So you can go to lots of lovely places and you don't have to have the expectation of weather. If you do, you're bound to be disappointed. But, you know, there's lots of places you can visit and that don't cost you lots of money and there's lots of free activities so I began to find free activities uh, looking on the council website and finding things like the museums that were open for free or where the council did free days like once a year I discovered they opened for free the castle and you know we didn't want to go to the castle more than once a year and um, we discovered that the zoo did uh, kind of introductory cheap days and that kind of thing you know just looking out for bargain opportunities and there was always lots and lots to do and we would do things like we'd make our own play-doh and the girls would play with play-doh we'd have a big arts and crafts box and that didn't consist of lots of expensive things that I bought from a shop a lot of it was things like sweet wrappers I kept a whole bag of them sparkly ones from Christmas and the girls would make pictures with them so we always had glue and glue spreaders and maybe some glitter and I'd keep toilet roll innards inner tubes and anything that I thought ribbons like sparkly paper and I'd buy things like cardboard and coloured card now and then and they just I just let them loose and they just made lots of stuff and they enjoyed themselves so it was it would keep them occupied on a rainy day it was simple it wouldn't cost lots of money we'd go to the library and get books out we'd sit and read books while we we're in the library for a bit we would take our time 
we also were very fortunate at that point to have a toy library. So sometimes we'd go to the toy library and they'd pick something, a toy or a game to bring back and you could keep those for three or four weeks. And you, that included big things for the garden. So we didn't have to buy big garden toys. You could borrow a sand pit or a paddling pool or a slide and just have them for a few weeks over the summer. And that was good because it meant they didn't get bored with things. So, you know, you spend a lot of money on one particular thing. How many times do they just use it for a bit and then get bored and it just sits somewhere in your house or garden going kind of a bit sad and faded and, you know, you don't really get much use out of it. So I think it was it was kind of a good thing to have the toy library. It saved us lots of money. And the other thing we used to do is we'd take the girls to the carpet sale or to the charity shop or to a jumble sale, give them a small amount of money. And they could see then just how cheaply you could buy things second hand. And then when they went into somewhere new, they would be like, well, price is in here. I can get something like that at the charity shop for half the price. And we'd give them a little bit of money to spend. So it was really good for them. It actually taught them the value of money. And now I'm older and the kids are independent and they've all moved out and they've got their own lives. I am lucky at this point to have more time to appreciate the simple things in life. And I do really, I think it is the older I've got, the more I realise that, you know, money can't buy you happiness. And I know it's a money can help. Money can help in many ways. I would not have want to be grindingly poor because in that case, money can buy you happiness and it can buy you certain things that will definitely make your life easier. But at the end of the day, once you've got those things, once you've got a certain level of comfort, it's more about just adding value to your life in other ways. So if you keep it simple and look at the things that really do add the value, then you can maybe start to look and find that deeper contentment that so many of us are looking for and just find really quite elusive. So even now at this point, when I'm kind of at retirement age or just approaching retirement age, I still try to keep my costs as low as possible because I don't, I don't know how long I'm gonna be here for. So I don't wanna to have to work loads now that I'm in my 60s. So I focus on trying to spend as little as possible so that I then have the money to do the things that do I mean a lot to me that I enjoy and luckily for me I do really enjoy simple things I love walking the dog we see we've been out for a very early walk in the sunshine this morning and it was lovely it was 7 a.m it was really quiet sun was out not many people out me and Archie really enjoyed that it was really nice and I just love being at home now I think I've always been a bit of a home bod but I appreciate the kind of homemaking parts of my life now and I'm not talking about just doing housework I'm talking about making things nice just making my surroundings somewhere where I like to be where they're comfortable but I'm not spending a fortune I'm not talking about redecorating every five minutes uh, but I am talking about maybe sticking a coat of paint up in certain rooms and maybe get some different curtains and some surrounding myself with things that I enjoy looking at and that I like and so, you know, I have a dresser full of china. I love looking at it. It's not worth very much. People come in and say, oh, that looks lovely, that dresser. And, you know, that isn't me showing off. That's just me surrounding myself with things that I enjoy looking at. And so at the older I've got, the kind of more that kind of making a comfortable home and making a nice garden has become something that I really appreciate and get a lot out of. It's the same with cooking you know I don't always feel like cooking but some days I just really enjoy just doing some simple food and making something easy and nice like putting the stock pot on this morning so I know I'm going to be making a really nice soup and I enjoy that for my lunch so something simple that doesn't cost a fortune and keeping everything clean and nice but not spending lots and lots of money so I do I'm not mad madly house proud but I do like to keep things tidy. I like to know where things are. Um, I like that sense of order. It saves me time. I don't run around looking for things. I know where they are, so it's nice. And I don't like spending all day just cleaning up and trying to do the housework. I'll do a little bit as I go along and just keep things nice. I'm no way a minimalist. Literally would never be a minimalist, but I'm also not a hoarder and I don't like clutter. The things I've got are things that I value. 
so I can't stand a lot of clutter. It would just drive me mad. But I also don't like people see, see mini, the minimalists on YouTube and Instagram and there's nothing there. And I think, where's the beauty? You've just got a cold and empty house, cold and empty home. And I, I just, I know you don't need lots of things to be happy, but I actually do like some things. So for me, I'm not a minimalist. I'm not really a maximalist. I am somewhere in between. I appreciate the things that mean something to me that I'll use. I don't want a load of stuff here that just sits around and never gets used. I'd rather give it to someone else who does. So, but I do like things that I just look at that are, that are beautiful. So I think it's nice to have those things. And I love seeing people. I love spending time with other people, but I really do like being my, by myself. And I really like my own company. And I like just pottering around and doing the garden and doing some writing and doing some reading. So I could not spend all of my time socialising. I think basically because I'm quite in an introvert, really. It's taken me a long time to realise this and, it, and it's taken me a long time to realise that it's actually all right to say, I'm an introvert. I like spending time with you sometimes, but sometimes I just need to go home and recharge my social batteries because I've, I'm full up. <laughs> it's full up with seeing people and noise. And now I need a couple of quiet days. And it's really funny because I talk to my daughters about this. Certainly two of my three daughters are very similar to me in that respect, but have recognised it a lot earlier than I did. I used to think I have to push myself because everybody else is doing this. I have to push myself to go to the pub. I have to push myself to go to things like parties. And, you know, me, I've never really enjoyed a party. I don't like loads of people I don't know, and loads of noise and loads of people drinking. And I used to criticise myself for that. And now I think, well, I don't criticise myself for that. That's just me. Um, I don't criticise people for being loud and extrovert and loving loads of attention. I don't criticise them for that. I just think, well, that's you and this is me. You do you, as the saying goes. So um, I think just recognising your own kind of personality type is helpful as well when you're trying to simplify and find the things that really matter to you. And for me, that is spending time with my mum, with Justin, with the dog and the cats and my daughters and a certain few select friends. Don't have masses of friends. I have a few friends that mean something to me. So I honestly think the less busy and less complicated I make my life, the more happy and content I generally am. As soon as I start feeling like I've got to be superwoman and I've got to get everything done and I've got to squeeze all these things into my life and I've got to write the longest list and get it all scheduled into my day. As soon as I do that, the, the quicker I feel that my stress levels are rising and I know I have to step back from that. I mean, I don't think I'm a type A personality anyway in the slightest, if there is such a thing, but I do, I am somebody who likes to have order. So I make a list and then that, there's that kind of, I can put pressure on myself to get everything done on that list. When actually I think, well, actually let's just, focus on the things that really need to be done soon and the other things are kind of nice to have and step away a little bit from it. And I do find that there's so many stressed and angry people about now. I think it really has got worse since COVID. And I think there's, people are, they, they've become less patient, they're more angry. You see it in the way they drive. People drive like maniacs and they're so rude on the road. And you see people abusing public workers, be they shop workers or, you know, bus drivers or whatever, anybody who is in the public, people feel that they can be ruder. And I swear it's happened in the last sort of five years or so. And I think it is because people are stressed about more things now. I think COVID perhaps tipped people over the edge and the cost of living crisis, where people were already running with their stress levels up here. So the starting point for stress was here. It was only going to tip them over the edge to go a bit higher. Whereas if you started a bit lower, then you can take a little bit more stress, can't you? So I think that's what's making people so angry. And this kind of need to keep working, 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 because we need to buy, keep buying, buying. We need to keep consuming. And people just don't all look at that. They don't see that. They're kind of stuck on this wheel. They don't know how to get off it. They know they're not happy. And I think if... A lot of us on mass just went, no, we don't need to keep buying this stuff. Let's stop buying. Let's start cooking and eating nice food. Let's start spending time together. Let's start reevaluating our lives. 
obviously it's not realistic for everyone to stop working you know we are that's how our society is geared up so you know i'm relying on people to be working in the supermarket i don't grow all my own food i'm reliant on farmers to do that for me i'm reliant on somebody to drive trains for me i'm reliant on people to work in hospitals we can't all just go well we're stepping back from that we're going to live a simple life and we're you know we don't need much money we're going to get our costs down so low that we can just get a camper van and just go traveling and and don't do anything else there's certain points in your life when you might be able to do that and there's certain points in your life where you have to contribute to your community and the society society that you live in but I do think that we could all think about doing less of that and I think we would be happier as a society if we worked less and consumed less and valued the things that really do at the end of the day mean the most to us you know like the, the questions you ask yourself when you're dying you know your regrets and do I regret not buying another pair of designer shoes or a designer handbag or do I regret not really talking to my family not getting to know my friends really well and not getting to know my neighbours and which are the things that you would regret doing do I regret not working more hours at the office or not doing more ironing or do I regret not having visited Snowden or not having visited my old primary school friend and spending time with them whilst I could you know it's the things it's just those things that you can never go back to do again so it's just worth reevaluating at some point we don't have to do everything at speed we can slow down a little bit and Maybe if we can look at our lives to see where we can simplify, we'll feel calmer and less angry about everything. So tell me what you think in the comments. Have you done things to kind of simplify your life and just slow down a little bit? Have you read that book? If you haven't read that book, see if your library's got one or see if they've got a secondhand copy somewhere. In Praise of Slow by Carl Honore is a really good book. It's really worth looking at. And there's lo lots of books around on simplicity and simplifying your life and that doesn't mean you've got to chuck all your belongings away or give them all away and just live in an empty room with a rucksack full of your belongings but it just you know maybe you could simplify things stop buying things use what you already have and focus your efforts and your time on doing the stuff that's actually going to make you happy in the longer term. So let me know. I'd really like to know what your thoughts are on this topic and whether you have taken steps, what steps you have taken and generally what you think. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget, please do give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you know next time I'm uploading a video and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.